Okay. All right. So we'll start admitting people. Admit. Do you hear that beepy noise? Or is it just me? It's just me. <laughs> I'm bringing in my ears now. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. Hi, Hi everyone. Long time no see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So many hours. <laughs> Penny and I were both in a meeting last night. <laughs> oh, cool. Cool, cool. Hi, Dave. Good evening. Are you still snowed in? Uh, we're out of it for a little while. I know there's more coming, though, right? It's supposed to miss us and go north and north, west. Yeah. They got dumped on. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it was. We spent, we were four days, couldn't get out of the house. Wow. Dave lives up in North Dakota and uh, my, that's where my family is from. My parents used to live up there. So I still keep, I still know people up there. So I still watch like the storms that come in, <laughs> which are pretty much inevitable, but not usually this late. I was going to say, yeah. let me guess, it's completely out of the usual turn of events that you would have for up there. Well, we had snow right. here in Illinois just a week ago too. We woke up one, weather, not even a week ago. It's just yeah. crazy. Yeah, everywhere. we woke up one morning and it was all white outside. But they yeah. got like they got like three feet of snow. Like they got dumped on and up there. Yeah. Oh, that's we I don't know if you heard about. It was funny because I grew up outside of Philadelphia, and this is the snow they got in Philadelphia. Not as much of it, but that wet, heavy snow. Yeah. You know, out here it's usually so cold. It's a real fluffy snow. It just blows around. You can't see anything. But this was this was nasty. It, they, it was 97 was the last time they had an April snow like this. And that was just after I moved here. <laughs> and wow. I know yeah. you heard about the, we had the, 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 they were calling them, what were they calling them? Um, rain bombs that we had in, in North Australia a few weeks ago. And they were getting like one to two years worth of rain in wow. a few hours. Right. Yeah. There's been flooding it's going on just up too. Massive, yeah. massive flooding. It's just insane. Um, fortunately, we didn't get that down here. It just grained drizzly. And Penny over in Perth is probably beautiful and sunny, like usual. No, I, if only I was in Perth, I'm actually down further south oh. of WA. So we're actually, I think autumn's sort of missing us. We've gone straight into winter. Oh, so have we. Yeah, although yeah. autumn's popped back in again this week. Yeah, uh, uh, the sun's out now, so it's nice. So we'll hopefully it'll be okay. <laughs> Lovely mild climate. I can't imagine all that snow. It would just no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I can't fathom when yeah. when other people talk about it. I'm like, yeah. I can't fathom three foot of snow. No. <laughs> and what do you do? Play a lot of solitaire, Dave. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, you catch up on all the shows that you really didn't want to watch anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> Go through your folders and your. Uh, Lightroom and say, yeah, let's clean this one out and get rid of this. I'm never going to use that film. <laughs> and then when you get really bored, you get your wife to play Yahtzee with you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It's beautiful, though. So badly. Right. Even the farmers aren't complaining, although they lost a lot of livestock in this so. I saw that. Yeah. Cause one of the groups I belong to on Facebook is my parents' uh, hometown that they uh, grew up in. So I still see, you know, they, they still post stuff in there and I still see pictures, you know, everybody's posting pictures. And I saw some of the stories about the cattle and horses and stuff too. It just, uh, it's crazy. Yeah. Sad. Mm. I'm going to give it a few, what time is it? We'll give it a few more minutes and see if anybody else shows. I know, where's is Tom? Tom Mills is in here, sent a picture for us to look at, um, an, an infrared picture. And I got two other photos from two people that are in the community, but not active in the community. So um, we'll, we'll take a look at them. I think that uh, one is just somebody kind of looking to fix a photo that maybe was taken on vacation or something. Um, and the other one I'm not really sure about, I'm gonna look at it anyway. And if Julie as a portrait photographer might be able to help with some of it, 
I think it's a phone shot and I don't think there was any lighting or anything, but yeah, you know, we'll see what we can look at. Somebody might have suggestions. Yeah. Throw it's always it. <laughs> what? Throw it in Neo and relight it. Well, oh, you know what? That's a good, I wonder. I didn't think about that today. I don't really use it. I use it to get rid of the dust spots. That's all I've been using it for. It is great for that. It is, but it doesn't take care of all of them. Or maybe I just have too many. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, I, I need my, I need to take my camera in and have it clean, like professional, you know, like, because I can do it myself, but obviously it's like, it needs a good cleaning, you know, because there's we, too many. We we just went, or we just come back from um, South Australia, um, like really, really dust bowl, desert type Australia. And, um, oh, yeah, the dust spots in my camera. <laughs> right. And I kept cleaning it out. But, yeah, the further we went along in our trip, yeah, the worse the um, dust spots got. <laughs> it's hard, too, because, you know, you, you, you don't want to carry too much stuff. But, but so, like, when I went on my trip to Antarctica, I actually rented a second body because I knew that I didn't want to be switching lenses there, you know, because it's windy and it's rainy or snowy or wet and, you know, but sometimes you don't have that option or you can't, or you're somewhere you don't, you know, you, you're not, you don't want to take your second camera or whatever. And then you're switching lenses and all kinds of stuff gets in there. Well, even with me, I had, I had two camera bodies, but I was still one camera pretty much had the wide angle on it the whole time. Right. And it didn't come off, but then I'm jumping between like the 300 mil or the macro or I'm putting <laughs> the lens babies on. So that was the one that got really, really grubby. Um, so anytime, anytime you take it off and I mean, I'm trying to do it, you know, in the car and trying to keep the dust down and, but yeah, it's really hard not to. No, right. Right. In, but right. I mean, right. obviously if you don't change lenses, then it's not going to be. So no, right. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's I'm I'm a shocker. I'm always changing lenses. Is it just me, or is anybody else like that too? No, because I, I I don't I only I only them. really only have two lenses that I shoot with. So that the problem oh. is you have too many lenses. <laughs> ah well, yeah, and I left half of them at home. <laughs> I didn't take any of the portrait stuff because I knew I wasn't going to be shooting portraits. So right, I mean, apart from kangaroos and things, I shot their portraits. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a I'm a minimalist when it comes to gear and stuff, so I just don't. I'm trying to find these. Okay, just making sure I have the images here that we. Oh, I'm gonna have to leave a bit early because I've got right. a builder coming in today. But yeah, no problem. We'll we we probably we won't be on here. It'll probably be a little less than an hour, I would say, with what we're gonna do. Um, all right, let me, uh, let's start with these images. Looks like this is about what we're going to have here today. So thank you guys for showing up. I appreciate it. And I was, I don't know if you were all here earlier, but I have like three, uh, actually only, I have three images that people sent in. I don't, two of them, I have no idea kind of the background behind or anything. Um, I have a little bit of information from the people who sent them that I can share. So... The first image, the guy says, I just want the photo not too bright and no chromatic if possible. He doesn't like the shiny look is basically what he's asking for. It's like uh, a little more natural if possible. Now, when you see the image, you're going to question it because I did. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're going to have the same question I do. I don't know if it's a person or a, or a mannequin. I don't know. It looks like a phone shot that, you know, there was no lighting or anything like that. So um, basically he just is too, too shiny and uh, is what he said. So I'm going to share my screen. You guys can all help me with this because really I'm a little bit at a loss on this one. So you can see this. Yes. Oh, that has to be a mannequin. I think so too. But then if you, if you, if you zoom in, it, it I, it's gotta be, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I was questioning. I'm like, but you know, so I don't know what he's trying to do. I have no idea why he took the image. I don't know anything other than he says it's too shiny. And I work in Lightroom 
I don't work in Photoshop enough to know what I could do with this to help. Um, somebody just suggested trying Neo and I actually would be interested to see what would happen in Neo. And I don't even know if I know how to do that. So let's, let's see. <laughs> I mean, obviously, the, the first place to start in Lightroom would be dropping the highlights down. Right. And I messed around um, with it a little bit earlier. I'm just going to see yeah. if I can relight and see what happens in. in uh... Yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that runs. So relight. You know, did he so say so what I'm he just... wanted to do with the image? No, he did not. Which That's why it's difference. hard when people send in images and they're not on the call because then I don't always know. So you, this is brightness. I mean, you know, are you, you can, in? Are you in Neo? Yeah, this is Neo. So we this can't. Is, we can't see it. You can't. So see you, you can't? No, no, we can only no, see your screen. Like that screen. Oh, I know why. I know why. I know what I did. Hold on. You you shared Lightroom, not your screen. I did yeah. because usually, yeah. Um, we'll try again. Now you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. Oh, so let me zero these out. Now you can see it, right? Yeah. Okay. So I was just playing with the, the relight brightness near and far. You know, you could probably bring up all of it to match a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Which kind of helps a little. I mean, obviously, if you go all the way, it's too much. But then you can bring your overall exposure down. Right. Or even... You know, I don't know. I've never really messed with this much. That's actually not a bad way to do it. It isn't. You, it, it's not. It, it's not. It evens it out. Right. But so then that's you bringing. Just bring the overall um, exposure down in the develop module. You've got mail. Look, I struggle with this program, to be honest. Um, Go into the develop. Oh, module. there, develop. I see it. Yep. And then you can bring your. And you can try the smart contrast too. Oh, there it goes. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't need to go down much, but the smart contrast can sometimes even it out as well. That's and you can bring your either. highlights down from there too. So even that's a little bit better than it was, isn't it? Mm -hmm. well, it looks like there was head on lighting. From those, those yeah, I pops. don't think that there was. I mean, I don't think there was any, you know, because you can see across her nose, like the lights from the ceiling or whatever. Yeah, and even in the eyes, you've actually got that. I mean, I know you get reflections in the eye, but they're, they're like reflections in plastic, not reflections. Right, in, yeah. In actual the surface of the right. eye. So, yeah. Because um, you don't normally get reflections in the whites of the eyes. It's just in the the iris that you see the reflection yeah so, yeah yeah um so but yeah i mean they could play around with it but the other thing that you could do would be to go into um you can probably do it in lightroom but it's probably easier in photoshop but if you actually cloned mm -hmm. at like say 20 percent over the really really bright area Oh. I was thinking exactly the same, Julie. I was thinking that if you use the patch tool or yep, a clone, the patch tool just or right. like skim that. near yeah. it, yeah. And then yeah. you can reduce the opacity as well if it's too much and then blend it in, yeah. Yep, yep, exactly. Terrific. Yeah, see, you guys, I, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there and see what I can do, but. Yeah, so if you go on to a new layer, You know, it always takes me like no, 15 that's minutes. group, new layer. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> that's how much I use this, okay? And then go into your clone tool. Yep. And drop your opacity down to, say, 30%. All right. Yep. Now, if you just... And change the current area. layer to current and below. Oh. Up, yeah, up the top. No, up the top, Laurie. Yep. Where you've got sample, you've got current layer, you need to change that to 
Oh, uh oh, oh. Yep, yep, carrot okay. and glow. Yep. Ah. So now if you then select just near where it's really bright, so not where it's bright yet, just a little bit left more, and then go over that area, you probably need to make your brush a bit softer. Yeah, you've got a well, hard I see, end I see what you're doing though, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, I, see what you're, I see what you're doing. So just make your brush soft. Oops. So you've got your hardness set at a hundred percent. If you take your hardness down to zero, or if I pick a different, yep, a soft or a different brown brush, yeah. yeah, and then try it again, and that will help. Wow! Oh, yeah. So it's. I mean, you've got to sort of finesse it and play with it. Right. No, but this it, kind of shows what what's possible. Yeah. The other thing that you can do, what Penny was mentioning, was grab the patch tool. So um, that's in the, um, yeah, that one. So go into the healing tool. Yep. Hold the little arrow down. Yeah, I'm trying. It yeah. It's not. Uh, there we go. Yeah, and then go to the patch tool. So go go up her face. So just grab the space bar and, and move up. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, go up a bit more to that big patch on her forehead. Probably easier. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So if you were to circle around where the highlight is, no, oh. where that, yeah, just there. Yep. And then drag that to the left. I uh, probably. Oh, uh, you have to do it on the same layer. Oh. No, you've got up the top. Sorry, you've got ah, sample, okay. sample layers. layers. Yep, turn that on. Yep, now. Yeah, so you probably have to move it around to sort of find the area that works best. Right. But you can soften it off that way. Yeah. And you can so feather the edges quite that. a bit too. If you feather the edges and then that can work a bit better too. Yeah. Right. Well, we've given him some good ideas, I think. Yeah, yeah, I hope. <laughs> but I mean, there's there's all there's more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> right. Oh, absolutely. And and even within even like you just showed, right? In Photoshop, there's more than one way to do it. Yeah. So and I mean, he's he's now got he can try it in Lightroom. He can try it in Photoshop. Or yeah, if he's yeah. got Luminar, he can try it there. So yeah. Can I digress a bit? Because I see you've got Luminar Neo, and I'm only on Luminar AI. Yeah. Do you find Luminar Neo that much better? Um, I I haven't really done. I don't do a lot of editing. So when I when I get new software, I don't dig into it really in yeah. depth. Um, we were talking about it earlier. I use it for getting rid of my dust spots. Oh, that's um, what it's it's about. actually good at that. It's very good at, at removing um, power lines too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think and Julie the, may have delved into it a little bit more than I have. Yeah, the relight's pretty cool too. Oh yeah, those are. I should really play with those more, but I don't. Yeah. I mean, for portraits especially, I would imagine. I. It can be good, but I. I guess it's trying to teach old dogs new tricks. Well, uh, I was going to say you're used to doing things a certain way and knowing yeah. the results you're going to get. When you start trying new things, well, it's yeah. a good way to learn. You know, to learn new things. But then you're like, wait, this doesn't look like what I usually do. But what I, I what I have done um, with Luminar, whether it's AI or Neo or whatever, I've had a few because I, I teach, I, I I do this weird thing. So I will teach people who don't want to be photographers, their their creators, and I will teach them how to photograph their product for social media and stuff like that. So I teach them the bare bones basics with the camera just to get what they want. Um, and then of course they've got to edit it, but they don't want to edit it either. So that's where somewhere Neo and AI is brilliant for people who don't like editing. Right. Um, right. but if you really, really like the editing process, then you, you feel a little bit hogtied, I guess. Um, but it, quick and quick and simple edits in Neo are fabulous. Yeah. And Luminar um, AI the, too, I, I find, I, yeah, I go, I, I use that more than I do Neo. I haven't really spent the time in Neo yet. 
I haven't spent a huge amount of time in Neo, but I have a little bit. But yeah, I mean things like the sky replacement and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people who like the sky augmentation were upset that it was removed in Neo. Huh. So I never really used it, so it didn't really bother me. But yeah, the the dust removal, the power lines removal, the relight, um, things like that, um, and yeah, some really really good handy features that you can use in there. Yeah. And I love some of the the loots um, and the moodiness and things like that that you can add in too. A brilliant, yeah. Okay. All right. So the next the next image I've got is the family one that I was telling you about. And let me just tell you what this guy said. Um, there's sun glare in the middle of the photo, so he's not sure if there's a tool. He uses Affinity Photo and Luminar 4 or Luminar AI that can be used to correct it. Um, he's still new on using available tools in the in the apps that he's using. So um, let me share my screen again. Uh, share. So you can see what he's talking about. Why? You have to make noises at me. See, there's that sun, sun glare right there. Right, so I messed around in Lightroom with it. And that's it's still too obvious, but I mean, I didn't like go, you know, spend an hour trying to fix it. I just was trying to mess around to see what might work. So you can, you know, that's a, it's a little better. It's a little too far though, because you can tell that it's a little bit darker. You know, but, you know what you could do, just jumping in there. If you use the masking tool right um and did Oops, a radial sorry. filter which that's is what, what I, you probably did anyway exact, yeah it is what i did yeah but then using um the so if you bring your mask up well this is hard trying to do this with my hands behind my back right sorry <laughs> <laughs> and it is it is what i did i did use the radio yeah. filter but if you just make your masking tool a little bit bigger See now, okay, um, hold on. Yeah, so just hit the little arrow to make it a bit bigger. Oh, no, it disappeared. That's because Sorry, I took it away because I don't know how to make it bigger. <laughs> oh, just, just, there's a little line there. Without starting no, no, over. no, not, not, the, not make that bigger, make the actual tool, like your box, make that bigger. I can't oh, really this? see what you're doing. Oh, yeah. this? Yeah, make that bigger. So hit the little line. Oh, there. Okay. So if you if you click on the radial gradient there, yeah, and right, and there's see the little arrows. Okay, you can intersect mask with and click the brush. Oh. Okay, so if you now brush over just their faces, and you might have to make the image a bit bigger. So. So what you're doing is you're brushing over like their heads and their shoulders. So you're making them a bit brighter, but you're still keeping that sun spot behind them. Oh, huh. if that makes sense. Yeah. So you will have to like change your, I would drop your highlights down. So even though your mask is on, so drop your highlights down. Oh, no, you're not on your mask anymore. Oh, there we go, here. Yep, okay. So, yeah, drop your highlights down. Maybe boost your exposure just a touch. So you sort of, and bring your, maybe your whites down. So you sort of have to play around with it. Right, right. But right. What, what you could do is you could relight them, but still have the sun flare behind them. Right. If that makes sense. Interesting. Yeah, because what I did, I did, and I know that's, like, again, that's like harsh. What I did to their faces is harsh. Yeah, um, yeah. But it's really I, hard, though, with something like that. Yeah, and I, let me see if I if I kept a cop. I thought I, I thought I screenshotted what I did. I did. Just so I could remember what I did, because I don't remember when I do stuff. So I just went in there and, like, increased the contrast, lowered the highlights, and I, I use the dehaze as well yes on that area of the radio the radial filter on that yeah, area that's and that's what I did what made it a bit harsh yeah yeah because it, it yeah you've got to be really subtle with it no and I it was up at a hundred so yeah 
But yeah. I, again, I was just trying to see, you know, what I could do in Lightroom. But again, you know, in Luminar, if you use the red light, you could probably do let's see, that edit. as well. And he no. has Luminar AI, so I'm going to go in AI. Okay, yeah, so that doesn't have the red light. Oh, it doesn't. So... No. Right, let's see. Okay, maybe I should have tried Neo first. That's all right. Again, he, he, oh, here we go. Yeah, I was going to say again, we can't see it, but we can. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> patience, um, patience. What's yeah, patience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not patient either. So if you tried going into enhance and tried the accent, I'm just wondering if that would bring. You, you're really going to have to sort of play with some of the filters to see. Yeah, see that didn't yeah, really do much, did it? Go to light, yeah. So it keeps the it keeps the it just keeps the circle there no matter what. Yeah, yeah, it's not really. So let's let me go see. Let, let's try. Uh, I mean, I know he doesn't have a uh, Luminar Neo, but let's uh, let's see how it does. Put it in too many things yeah. see i have too many lenses you have too many programs i well and some of them i swear i've like gotten rid of because i never use them but i had to use them for one thing or something yeah and, yeah mm. yeah we end up collecting them don't we yeah and then i can't they're still there for some reason oh that's the one i did i picked the wrong thing hold on sorry <coughs> Sorry, I picked the wrong. Let it in. No. Is my screen still shared? Is okay. So let's make this a little bigger. Let's see what this does. It's interesting. I mean, you're not going to, I think you, no matter what you do, you're going to have to use a mask of some sort yeah. just for that area. Yeah. I mean, you can't because otherwise you're just doing a, you're just doing a global and that's just not going to. Well, you can mask in relight. Oh, <laughs> how about that? So mm -hmm. yeah, up the top, it's got that little circle with like a bright, no, 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 in the relight. Oh, here. Um, no. Next to that. No. I go, oh, it's disappeared now. They move something, try moving something around. Moving. There is, there's normally a, a, there's a couple of little icons that turn up in the right hand corner just at the top there. Really? Yeah, yep. they were up just before. Yep. So move. Yep. <laughs> Where did they go? I <laughs> know. Okay. Oh, you know what it is? It's, oh. Go into edit. It's this damn. Oh, here. Maybe is it here? No. no All right. Just... Let me discard. Okay. Edit. Just discard the edit. So usually, like right here, there's a. Yes, yeah, so I'm wondering. You've got this cancel and apply up the top. Just uh, cancel the advanced settings setting, so it's it's not showing. So close here. the advanced settings. Yeah. No, okay, so it doesn't come back. Maybe you got a bug there. Well, it still shows I have one edit, even though I discarded my edits too. So it that was, was there. It was weird. there just a minute ago. But you've yep. got. All right, let's go. Let me too. let me go out and come back in and see. That is weird. That is. Yeah, because you can, you've actually got a mask that you can put on, in oh, Luminar. Um, you can tell that I don't use masks in anything very much. So, but I just, for what I do, it's just not how I edit or what I need yeah. to do to edit. So, all right, let me make them bigger a little bit first. I'm going to rewrite and they'll magically be there now. No, we they aren't. No, <laughs> move, move one of your sliders. See oh. if that makes... Ah, there they are. 
Yeah, so that's a mask tool. Okay. So you can add the mask and you can paint it on to an area or you can take it off an area. So if you painted it on their head and their shoulders, not so much the background, but... I'm not being precise, so... No. And see if that... No, that's... It doesn't, it doesn't do a, a lot. I mean... Not as much as I was hoping, yeah. No. I, I think the, the mask in Lightroom probably did a better job. I think it might have, yeah. <laughs> and I, I think that I just wasn't, like I said, I wasn't spending an hour really being, you know, tweaking every little thing to see, you know, you'd have to really spend some time on it to make that. Yeah. Definitely. And again, yeah. I, you know, dehaze was probably the best thing. I I took it up to 100 because I want to see what happens. But um, again, I you know, hopefully that helped him a little bit. You know, I just uh, did the radial in Lightroom. Yeah, I think that worked better. And then you just do the, the intersect and, then, and you, you just could brush do, it over. Yeah. See, I didn't do that before because I, I didn't know that was a, a an option yeah yeah you've really you've really got to play with the masking features in Lightroom to really sort of learn the yeah because this that's going to take it, a lot yeah and it's going to take yeah. a lot of of tweaking to yeah. to uh you know and I think in in I mean he's still got some detail there but not figure out how to how to make All, it better uh, yeah so i think it's never going to be perfect but yeah. you can definitely improve it a little bit but yeah yeah i i'm i was at a loss but i was like i'm gonna see what i can do <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully that helps with a, a few options yeah and then we have we have this is the infrared from tom mills who's actually in the why won't my thing go now There we go. Who's actually, Tom, you're in the hangout, right? Maybe. He's present. Yep. He looks like he looks like he's in, oh, he's in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. He's in the chat. Okay. So if you, you, let me see what you said here. You said, um, possible color swap, false color, or whatever strikes my fancy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not a usual infrared person um so i wouldn't even know where to start with this like how why do you want a color swap or what would make you do a color swap in an infrared is that when it makes like the trees look pink or is that a color infrared yes that's a color infrared so what do you mean by color swap in this i don't understand i don't i and i'm again i'm like an infrared clueless <laughs> so Tom, are you referring to like split tones and stuff like that? So he's saying you can swap color channels like red and. So if you go to either the color grading or probably even in the tone curve and you could change that out in the tone curve. Well, I was messing around with this earlier and, you know, you can see what it does like by changing. Let's see what else. Shadows, mid-tones, global. You know, it's not, but this isn't changing. You usually no, you just have to desaturate. So usually he desaturates and increases contrast. So, I mean, it's kind of cool, though. I mean, just to see, I was like, well, it's kind of cool what you can do with, with, I mean, these are cool tools to mess around with, with any photo, this color grading panel. It's interesting to see what how it affects you, things. What if you grab the, one of the colors? So if you go into, say, the shadows. Oh, oh right. Oh, right, right. Yeah. So you can have like a really cool split tone between the shadows and the highlights. Right. Yeah, Ooh. I mean, that, it's like the, the possibilities are endless, right? Like, you can do Ooh. that, you can do... So that's cool. 
Ooh, yes. Or you can do like what everybody's doing now with the whole orange and blue teal thing that's like cinematic whatever, which I'm so sick of seeing. <laughs> <laughs> but if you go if you go to the global one, so you've got you're doing yeah, so if you actually go to the global one, so that does colour over the whole thing. So you could do, you know, right. like a, a sepia or a selenia or even coffee or something like that. Yep. I like the split toning effect though. That was cool. Yeah, I do too. I, 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 split tone is fun to play with just yeah. in general. So, you know, and then I, I what, if, left what if you went to, I, I left it what if you went into the tone curve? So Tom said he doesn't usually do color at all. So if you go, go up the top back into your basic panel, and up the contrast this is what he was saying and he totally desaturates it so pull the saturation and the vibrance right down then it just it, it ends up being to me personally it looks more like a black and white except that you have yeah white. See, in the tone curve, you can go through and you can actually play around with the, the individual channels. Right. So Tom says that looks like his usual. Yeah. So you use it in infrared, you shoot in infrared, and then it, it makes it more black and white. Okay, so... Uh, reversed, yeah. Right. So that's the original. Yeah. So, but if you, you play around in the the actual color channels in the tone curve, then you yeah, can get this is cool. interesting... It, there's so many options. It's just like, you know, it, I, I mean, oh, you're welcome for playing because that's how I operate, actually. That's why I don't actually know how to do anything. I just go, oh, let's try this and do that and play. And then and then if somebody asks me how I did something, I never can tell because I don't know. Well, um, you the sliders <laughs> where you are now, the sliders, and move these, those red and orange. You can really get some neat effects that way. Well, and the, I was just going to luminous. Depending, I think the luminance probably would be better in this. A little bit, a little. Not a lot. You can't really see a lot of difference. I think you'll see more with the saturation at first and then the luminance that, well, the, adjust down. That. Yeah, the red, it's not try, doing try the blue. Usually, because you usually, usually, yeah, it's not, it's not doing much. No. Usually, and it maybe because it's infrared, like if this was a, a straight black and white, usually when you go in and mess around with the reds, especially, you can see the differences immediately. But yeah. maybe if we did hue instead, there's still not much happening. Nope. No, but I, yeah, I, it's, you know, depending on what you want to do or what outcome you're looking for, or if you're just looking to experiment, you know. Just uh, really play like with that. things. Please. The split tone looked awesome. But yeah, I think that's cool yeah. too. Because then you can. It just—it's amazing what it affects, you know, and what what looks what. And because it's infrared, you're almost sort of working against what you would normally look at so i mean the sky is obviously not blue so if you put blue right. into the sky you're going to get something a little more yeah you, know, you have slightly different tones than what you would expect to have yeah yeah cool so from now on you're going to put color in your infrareds huh <laughs> <laughs> or try <laughs> so those are all the images that we had today so it, it was an interesting selection of things that are a little bit be different than what we normally get, I think. Yeah. Um, let me stop my share. And I think it's interesting to be able to, to try and see how different programs um, work. Yeah. Ways. So. Well, and I think it's hard. I mean, you know, you don't want to have to go out and buy, you know, like we're not all going out and buying no, all these programs. No. I happen to be, you know, because of photo focus, I have all the luminars. Um, you know, personally, I probably wouldn't have gone out and bought them myself because I just 
I'm I live pretty much in Lightroom. I do use Photoshop to some extent, but you know, I've had those already and I'm mm. not I'm not uh you know, it's hard to to justify spending the money sometimes on some of that stuff. Oh yeah, totally. Totally. So, you know, you get used to what, you know, I learned in Lightroom, which is why I use it because that's how I learned, you know. Um Tom uses uh, AC DC, which I've mm. heard of, and I have friends who use it, but I've never mm. ever um, no, I've tried never. it. Yeah, it's similar to Photoshop and Lightroom. So, Affinity. Somebody, uh, the person with the family shot said he uses Affinity as well, which That's I think I tried when I it first came out. Shot. I think when it very first came out. I looked at it, but it reminded me of Photoshop. And I was like, yeah, there's too much going on here <laughs> for me. Uh, I'm going to um, have to say goodbye. All right. Thanks, um, Julie. No worries. Lovely to see everybody again. And too. Uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks, hey, Julie. Have fun. Bye. Hey, thanks. So um, unless you guys have anything else or if somebody has any questions or anything, um, I always say this, but if you have suggestions next month, uh, one of our authors, it, um, Aaron, is going to do a presentation. I'm not sure on what. It probably will be either on uh, portraits of some kind because that's what she does, or on um, uh, she does a lot of light painting stuff too. So maybe she'll decide to do that. I haven't heard back from her yet what she's going to do a presentation on. So that's the plan is going forward every other month. I'm going to have people submit images and we'll talk about them like we did today. And then uh, every other month we'll do, hopefully if I can get more authors uh, to do presentations on either techniques or how they edit or, uh, you know, I did a general presentation last month on like seeing exercises and, and that kind of stuff. So if you guys have any suggestions, just, you know, you can private message me or email me um private message in the community or email me um at laurie at photofocus.com and you know we'll continue to do this every month i might change the time because this is by this time of day i'm like oh i still gotta do this <laughs> so good for those of us in australia well right and i you know what though last last month or the month before i tried doing one at like two o'clock in the afternoon uh in chicago here which is not yeah. a good time for you guys in australia no. but it's a good no. time for the people in europe but nobody yeah. in europe showed up so i don't you know i'm like all right i i would like I, to i could i could do a couple of hours earlier like if you like because now it's yeah. now it's quarter to ten in the morning right for me. right where are you oh. friend um, I'm on the east side, I'm, uh, yeah. New South Wales, yes. Okay. And, and it's, it's, yeah, I can do it a couple of hours earlier right. because, you know, I'm functional at 9 a.m. I'm not so functional <laughs> earlier than that, but uh, certainly I'm not functional at 2 a.m. <laughs> no, no, and I know. Well, and, and I, like for the Europeans right now, it's 3 o'clock yes. in the morning, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. one of the things I've appreciated that is that some of the some of these events these webinar events and things they have them at different times uh so to cater to people where we are any right. and people who are in europe and stuff like that right and so if you can't make it then you can't make it but if it's if it turns out to be at a good time well then we can make it well and, and they're is, always re these are always recorded also and then reposted yeah. in the community the next yeah, day usually good. so yeah. you know if people right. can't yeah. show can't yeah. show up like the two other people that submitted images weren't actually on here today so hopefully they rewatch it to to yeah. you know get the suggestions and help that we hopefully hopefully could help them with yeah well this is my first time to this particular community event and uh, i didn't submit any pictures because i had no idea what what it was all about. So this is, <laughs> this is an investigation to see what, what's what and whether it's really going to be helpful or not. <laughs> well, ho hopefully it's helpful. We're we're pretty laid back. Um, I'm the community manager for Photo Focus yeah. for the community. Um, I'm very laid back, so it's never anything formal. Um, and even the presentation that I, you know, it's just not. I'm just not formal. So, um, and we just want to, you know, try to get to to know. 
people in the community also and do whatever yeah. we can to help pe people with what they need help with. So yeah. sometimes, sometimes it's just me. Sometimes yeah. there's other authors. So uh, the photo focus authors usually join us. Um, there could be one or five other authors besides myself um, mm -hmm. in, in the call as well. So yeah. it depends on who's on the call and you know what we're talking mm -hmm. about. So yeah, yeah. Well, I've I've been working on uh, photos that I took quite a few years ago, and um, sort of trying to process them because they haven't been processed. And now that we've got all sorts of wonderful programs available, it's a good time to do that. But I get often get to a place where I think, now what else? This looks good, but is it good enough? Is it is you know is there still something else I could do with it? And uh, and and that's often the challenge I find that. Am I satisfied enough with this to post it somewhere? Yeah, like I, right. I, I think that there's a there's actually a, a cartoon or something out there that is uh, about the artist never being done, right? Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, you could probably be done with it today and go back to look at it again in a week or a year and and make different changes then, you know. Yep. Uh, especially with technology changing too, you know, oh. I can go back the the stuff that I shot 10 years ago, obviously I never edited um, yeah. much at all. I still yeah. edit a lot, but I still, you know, I learned things that help improve the image, mm. you know, just a little bit. So mm. it's, it's kind of an ongoing process and it mm. depends on what your final, you know, what your purpose is for the, sh for the image too, you know? Well, in a way, it's to justify having taken the photo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look mm. at some of these and say, why on earth did I take that? Because <laughs> you felt like it at the moment. Well, right? it was. And then, of course, of course, uh, my inex well, not my inexperience, but my uh, futile attempts to make a good photo turns out to be rather blah at that point. I think, but well, you know, you it was a beautiful practice. scene. Practice. Like, yeah, beautiful scene and stuff like that, but I didn't get it. It's practice, though, just like anything. That's right. You know, and it, you're right. not you're not spending money on film, right? It doesn't cost you anything to take those photos That's anymore. Right. You That's know, right. so shoot away. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> shoot away. All right, well, just, I've got to go. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think yeah. we're gonna we're yeah. gonna Okay, wrap it up yes. here anyway so i appreciate yep. you guys joining us today thank you right. so much and we'll hopefully yeah. see you next month yep. you too. Okay. thanks gail right. see you guys Bye. thanks tom Bye. thanks night Bye.